I lived in a town really deep in the woods, man. And, uh, you know, it was, everybody was related. All your cousins everywhere. And, you know, your neighbors were not that close. But anyway, when people came into town and didn't live there, you knew it. Everybody knew. So this, this, this family came through the town driving like an old RV. And it was, uh, they were gypsies. And they set up their place off of Carvermore Road in like in the woods, on a long road, where, you know, people have done that in the past. And nobody cares. You know, people got to live. So they set up their their, their, uh, their RV and had their awning and a couple canopies out. And everybody would ride by. You know, of course, nobody would stop. we just ride by and look. Oh, okay, we stand over there. But the gypsy, uh, they would sell stuff. And you know, you would know, ride by, you could tell they were selling stuff. You pull up there, and the girl there was a gypsy girl. God, you're talking about. She, wait. she was beautiful, man. I've never seen a girl so beautiful, man. And I'm from Lake Walkamore. We got some beautiful Indian women. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you. But something about her was different. Her hair was like um, black. And it wasn't straight like most of the girls around there. It was kind of like. Like kind of like curly, maybe. I don't know, I can't explain it, man. It was just the hair mesmerized you. And I could tell something was wrong with her. I said, something is wrong here. I mean, bad wrong. I got the hell out of there. And uh, at the time I had a cousin, his name was Neil. And he would take me and help with my other cousin. We were younger than him and he would, he always was selling something, you know, oil, perfumes. and. We would go up to Raleigh and sell oils at the state fair. Anyway, so I would always talk to him because he was very wise, you know. He would tell us what was going on. He told us, there was that gypsy girl, he said, hey, those gypsy people, man, they got spirits. And those spirits chase them around the earth. He said, you better not mess with them. And I listened to him. I really did. I listened to him. Well, the next day, maybe a couple days later, he came to pick me around up as usual, you know, so we could go sell some uh, perfume. And he tells us the story. It's like, hey guys, y'all won't believe what happened to me. I said, what happened to you? Well, you know the gypsy girl? I said, yeah. He said, well, I went by and, you know, asked her, uh, dad, I could take her out, take her out to town. I'm like, thinking to myself, what the hell? So he says, yeah, take her out, but, you know, don't keep her out late. Have her home before 11 o'clock. And he was like, yes, sir, I can do that. So we went, he, we went, to, this is what Neil said. He said, we went to the movies. You know, we went there watching the movie. And he said, I went and bought a bucket of popcorn, some milk duds, and some almond joy. And you know I spent a lot of money. And uh, we sitting there watching the movie. He said, but you know, I won't really watch the movie. I was just looking at her. And I was just amazed at how beautiful she was. You know, so I reach over there, get some popcorn, because I let her hold the bucket, you know. So I reach over there to get some popcorn, and I touch her on the finger. And then I touch her on the leg, I'm rubbing her leg. And she snaps my hand. And she said, they told me to tell you to stop. And I'm like, well, to be sure, did, she, did I hear her correctly? I'm looking around, you know, ain't nothing but me and her and on the front row there, and ain't nobody else there. And I'm like, they told her to stop. So I didn't say nothing. I just said, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this movie. I paid for the movie and the popcorn and milk does and all the joys. But I didn't believe me. I did not reach over and touch her. I just enjoyed the rest of the movie because I was really distracted after that. They... So I watched the movie, and after the movie, you know, we walking out, and uh, she's looking behind her like she left something. I'm like, what in the world did she leave? So I, I said, do you need, uh, can I help you, Marie? Her name was Marie. Can I help you? Do, do you? do you need some help? She said, no, they got everything. There she goes again with that day. So we get in the uh, van, I'm driving, and she's mumbling over there in the seat. Now I said, now maybe the radio is too loud. She don't like what I got planned. Maybe that's what she's trying to say. So I said, Maria, are you okay, honey? 
And she says, uh, yeah, I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm all right. But they, they, you know, they they want you to uh, they want you to take me uh, over over side the roads with me, and you can talk. And I'm like, wait a minute now, hold on, honey. They, <laughs> what are you talking about? She said, if you pull over, I'll talk to you, and tell you about it. So I'm thinking to myself, this is what Neil says now. He says, I'm thinking to myself now. There's two things getting ready to happen. I'm getting ready to get me some sugar, or I'm gonna find out who they is. And I'm like, my mouth's wide open listening to Neil because I can recall distinctly he told me, "Don't mess with that gypsy woman." And I'm like, where in the world? Is this what is this? What's this story this man's telling me? But I'm listening to him. I'm like. I'm thinking about Neil. I'm like, wait a second here. This is not adding up. Nevertheless, now I trusted this man, and he's always been wise. So he says, Marie uh, says, listen, Neil, um, I like you, and I really enjoyed the movie, and I'm glad you asked my daddy, because a lot of guys, they just see me, and they don't even ask my daddy, and they just take me out, and then there's all kind of trouble. There's always trouble. And they always come to help me out, but when my mom, my daddy, and my brother come, it's been, and we can't stay in one place, so we gotta leave. But they always here to tell me and look out for me, and they told me to pull over and, and ask you if, if I could talk to you. She, and he said, okay, I'm listening, honey, now who's the day? She says, well, everywhere I go, I got these little people that come with me. And some people can see them and some people can't. And I and, and obviously you can't see them because they're right there in the back of the van right now. Sitting right there. One's right here telling me, tell you to pull over. And then he gave me this knife here. Now she's got a knife, a bowie knife about that long in her hand. And she's smiling and grinning, telling me this story. And I'm like, now this is Neil telling the story. It ain't me. She's like, I'm. they told me to cut you. And I always listen to him because I've all, it always kept me out of trouble. Because something about you is telling me I need to cut you. And Neil's like, hold on, honey. Now, hold on now. I just We just went to the movie. I bought you them milk duds, them almond joys, and that popcorn. And we watched that movie, and I don't mean you no harm. She said, well, you did reach over here and touch me on my finger and try to rub my leg. And I'm telling you, they telling me to cut you. And if I don't do what they say, I always get into trouble. And Neil's like, honey, please don't cut me. And he says she took that knife and she swapped it and cut his bling armrest on his van. And he's like, what in the world, Marie? And he's like, hold on, honey. And he's next thing you know, he's at a cat fight. This woman's slashing at him, trying to kill him. And I'm like, what in this world is this man telling me? And um, he says she's slashing him up, slashing, didn't never cut him, just cutting up his thing. He grabbed her by the arm and she was just fighting, trying to cut him. And then she said, he said that he swears them things was helping her because he felt somebody pulling his leg. And next thing you know, he's out of the van. Something done drug him out of the van and she's standing over him with the knife. Next thing you know, he's able to get himself together. The spirits must have jumped on Neil because he jumped in the van and hauled ass and left her right there in the woods. And he said, here I am today telling oh y'all this story. God. Now, I don't know how Marie got home, but I can tell you this much. You better not go down there to see Marie. And that was that. But I tell you what, a couple days later, now me and my cousin Ron was in the car when Marie was telling this story. I mean, when Neil was telling this story. A few days later, I see my cousin Ron. Now Ron, to this day, he's he claims to be a deacon in the church, and uh, he's he hey he got all kind of respect from the community. But I tell you what, the next day or two, I see my cousin Ron. Ron had a big slag uh, like a mark on his face. I said, Hey, Red, what's what's up? What's up with you? He said, Well, Randolph, you won't believe what happened to me. And I'm like, What? What are you talking about? He said, you know that girl, Marie, that Neil was telling us about? I said, wait a minute. <laughs> you talking about the one that had all them days with him, with her, the spirit, the evil spirits? He said, yeah. He said, so I ride down there 
you know, I got uh, Mama's car. I rode down there, and uh, you know, I asked you if I could take her out. <laughs> no I said, way. "You got to be kidding me!" He said, "Yeah." He said, "I figured, you know, well, yeah." So anyway, ran up. You want me to tell you the story or not? I said, mm "Hmm, I do. I want to hear it, Ron. What happened?" He says, so he goes over there and picks her up. And he rode her up to the crossroads. So we rode to the crossroads. You know, at the crossroads, everybody sees you. You ain't hiding. Everybody knows where you at. So I went to the crossroads, and I'm talking to her. And she said to me, she said, Ron, you know what? She said, I ain't never had nobody treat me so nice like you have. And uh, they want me to tell you that. And Ron was like, oh, no. What you mean they? And she said, well... Um, I got, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Ron, I got these spirits that, that go with me everywhere I go. And she said, because my daddy and my brother always get into trouble because people try to get with her and kiss on her. And one guy pulled her pants down and my brother and dad took this knife right here and they cut up a couple people over there in Wyatt. Well, they cut up some people over there in Chadburn. They cut some people up all over, everywhere we go. And the sheriff finds out what happened. And next thing you know, we got to move. And, you know, I keep this knife with me. And, you know, they telling me not to do nothing to you. They telling me that you a nice guy and that I should just tell you all about it. So I'm going to tell you. And uh, Ron keep, proceeded to tell me about her and her demons. And uh, after Ron finished telling the story, I'm like, well, damn, cuz, what'd you do that for? He said, well, Randolph, I, I really don't know. The moral to this story is, you think you know who, who your cousins are, cuz, but, uh, you know, we were just kids, man, and we weren't interested in girls at the time until this. this I, my mom and dad raised me. Not, not, to, not to put my, not, to, not to touch, not to touch the fire. But apparently, everybody ain't raised like that. <laughs>